Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to nine things that Americans do that Brits don't. Now this is a video from Lawrence of Lost in the Pond. It has been years since I have uh, reacted to a video of his. Probably one of my favorite channels on YouTube. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I just got lost in the different requests I was getting and uh, yeah, just uh, stopped reacting to his channel. But he is probably my favorite Brit that lives in America that makes this kind of content. Um, he's been in America now for probably like a decade and obviously spent the first sort of 20-ish plus years in England. So he's he's probably really well placed in terms of comparing the two countries in terms of how the lifestyle is, the culture, the differences, things like that. So yeah, it's going to be fun to hear about things, observations he's made about things that you guys do that we don't for some reason. I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain, Britain and America, America lost, lost in, the, in pond. the pond. And one of those memos pertains to the things we do as people. It turns out that there are just things that people in one country do that the people in the other country do not do. And today we're going to take a look at nine things that Americans do that Brits don't. And take that title with a grain of salt, okay? It is, it's very much a generalisation. Of course, many of the things on this list probably are practiced by some people, some pedants over in Britain. I said yeah. pedants, not peasants. But for the most part, <laughs> on the whole, generally speaking, how many other ways can you say that? Americans do these things more than Brits. Now, if I'd have done this list maybe 12 years ago before I moved to the United States, there are some things I would have included that have since caught on in Britain. So, you know, baby showering or queuing up for the Black mm. Friday sales or getting a coffee to go. So since there's more of a level playing field in regard to those things, I'm just going to leave them off the list. And given the what all all presently trapped in our bunkers, even the ones that did make it onto the list probably shouldn't temporarily, including this. <laughs> Smiling at strangers, which I suppose is what I'm doing to you right now, so I'm a hypocrite in a way. And you know what, I think when I first encountered this, this is, this is when you're walking along, say, a footpath or you're in a parkway, and someone you've never met, maybe they've got a dog, uh, they just look at you. I mean, we do do that. I do. I, I, I definitely do that. I mean, not all the time, but if I'm at the park, like, yeah, I'll be like, all right, all right, mate. You and smile. It's, it sounds creepy when I put it like that. And at first it was, I thought, I thought I was going to get mugged, right? I, British people value their personal space, right? Don't, don't enter that, that zone. Um, and so when, whenever that happened, it was, it was a little off-putting, but I got used to it when I realized that Americans are just really friendly and this is a good thing, right? And so I not only came to embrace this, but I started doing it myself and, you know, people got a bit creeped out by the British teeth. Uh, I can't help that. It's just something I'm born with. And so you're going to have to accept it from now on. I must say though that during this sort of weird situation we find ourselves in, if anybody smiled at me while I was was going out to take the trash out I'd run for the hills we don't have hills in Chicago so I'd be lost Similarly, which is a word I had to say about 10 times before I got right, Americans might greet you not only with a smile, uh, but by saying, how are you? Or what's up? And these don't mean, you know, um, are you okay? Or anything like that. It just means hello, right? And it's in a way, it's sort of similar to how we Brits say, all right, um, and we're not asking if you're okay, we are, we're simply saying hello. So in many ways there are similarities between the two. I, I, I don't really know why that is. Are we just trying to soften and euphemize the word hello in the same way that we would with death or, or going to the toilet? That's, it's really odd when you think about it, but we both do it. Should I start my videos with, all right, I'm Lawrence and I'm, no, I won't do that. Uh, what I will do is go on to our next entry. It is quite interesting how over here, you know, saying, all right, mate, is just like a way of saying hi. You know, we aren't we aren't asking if uh, he's you're, you're actually right. It's literally just saying hi. But why? Why did it, why did that become a way of saying hi? Yeah. Yeah, yes, flags. Uh, I true. did talk about this in a video just recently that, you know, um, Americans, American families and houses and things like that are very prone to having the flag flying outside. And, and I found that it really doesn't matter which party you vote for or anything like that. People will still fly the flags regardless of that, particularly uh, on July the 4th. But you will see it at all times of year on numerous houses. And that's not to say that we, we don't fly the flag in Britain, but we usually reserve that for very special occasions 
like football matches, which are very special occasions these days. There's just sort of maybe there's more pride in the flag here or it symbolizes yeah. so much more and therefore it gets used. And when I say it symbolizes so much more, I mean, it really does. You've got the, the 50 stars representing each of the 50 states and then you've got the 13 stripes representing each of the original 13 colonies. And so it's symbolic in many ways. And, you know, it, it's part of the lexicon even. You've got words mm. like old glory, stars and stripes and things like that. And so it's just, it's, it's a very pervasive uh, part of American culture. Yeah, when I uh, arrived at JFK Airport last year, there is an enormous American flag like above the... So as you're go, walking through the lines waiting to go through security, if you look up, there is probably the biggest American flag I've ever seen in my life. It covers the entire ceiling, or at least it did when I was there. It was huge. And the amount of flags you see outside people's homes... You just don't see that here. You don't see that here in the UK. Ah, yes, date formats. You know, again, I've spoken about this before on the channel, but it's very much worthy of inclusion because when I first moved to the United States, it was very hard for me to get out of my head the British way of writing the date, which is to put the day first, the month, month second, and then the, and then the year. So it's yeah. sort of in, in order smallest of largest. unit, right? The smallest entity, the day, the second smallest, and then the third smallest, the year. It just makes the most sense to me. Like, to go through in the smallest to the largest. Or is it to the largest? It's it's so hard to word that correctly without confusing yourself. I'm not a mathematician. And that was evident in my early days of trying to get my head around the American date format. It's not hard. I mean, you obviously just switch the day and the month around, but it's, it's that thing you've known all your life. You haven't to unlearn what you'd already learned. And eventually working in an office every day for five years, the American way of doing things really did sort of cement itself in my head. And I, I came good on that front. And I think now if I were to move back to Britain, it'd be the other problem. And I'd, I'd have a hard time adapting. And if I tell everybody that, you know, my birthday is 11, 18, 1981, they'll think I invented six more months and, you know, will kick me out of the country again for forgery. That's not what that means. Falsehoods, just general falsehoods. Oh, and while I'm on the subject of birthdays, that brings me on to our next entry. I guess, yeah, we do say, you know, January the 1st, blah de blah de blah but then there are people who say the 1st of January, blah de blah de blah So, I, I don't know. I still think day, month, year is the best way. What do you guys... I'm sure a lot of the Americans watching this will be like, no, Kabir, you're wrong. <laughs> tailgating was such an alien concept to me when I first moved to America and in many ways it still is and that's mainly because I don't own a truck and or go to sports events because that's what happens when I talk about tailgating I'm not just talking about you know when you drive too closely behind another car I'm talking about that kind of thing that Americans do at sports events outside of sports stadiums or anywhere else where they can park it and they just casually light a barbecue and drink beer and I mean they look fun it's just I've never been invited to one so pity me come on feel sorry for me it's never happened the best you're going to get outside of sports stadiums in in britain is people selling pirated dvds i've just realized actually those pirate dvd sellers are they're probably struggling right now because a there's a pandemic on and b no one uses dvds anymore actually i suppose no gosh i cannot remember the last time i bought a dvd <laughs> it's got to be well over well over a decade ago well over we're talking like kid like i don't think i've ever i don't think i've ever actually bought a dvd <laughs> i think yeah my dad or my mum yeah I, we've not used dvds for like 20 years or something nobody is doing our next entry including me so i'm going to leave this to lawrence from christmas to explain Anybody that's followed my channel now for a while will know that I have feelings on free refills. In fact, I did an entire video about it. And while they are all the rage here, and of course you'll find them in most fast food outlets and other places, um, there is one clarification I have to make here. You will find free refills as an option in places like Subway in the United Kingdom. So in some capacity, America has exported it, but it is by no means as universal in the United Kingdom as it is in the United States. Facts, facts. And also, if you buy a free refill, you're paying like 
two to three times. Like for example, if you were to get a normal drink, which might cost you a pound fifty, in certain restaurants, if you want a free ref refill version, it'll be like four pounds. So they're charging you like th three times. It's it's just it's it's ridiculous. Like if it's a free refill, it should just be like the normal cost of a drink, shouldn't it? And as I've said before, I think the temptation of knowing that I could get a free cup of pop on top of the one that I've already had is what made me give up pop in the first place. So I do have that to thank America for. Of course, if you are American and you have the willpower to stay away from the free refills, more power to you. Free refills or not, uh, you know, Americans do like their water to be very cold. And I'm not talking about their bath water. That, can you imagine having an ice bath? Oh, do they? That is that is weird. Um, but they put lots of ice in their water occasionally. And you'll find this happening in restaurants. I like my water ice cold. So this is perfect for me, right up my street. But people will do it in the comfort of their own homes too. And this was a somewhat of an alien concept to me before I moved to the US. I think maybe it's because we live in a mildish climate in Britain. We don't feel the need to do that. And the water in Britain tends to come out of the tap quite cold anyway. So that usually suffices. But actually I have come to appreciate this one because during the summertime in Chicago or previously where I lived in Indiana, you know, it gets very, very hot. Uh, sometimes it can get over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit and if you go out for a run in that weather and that's that's not me I don't run um, but if you do you're gonna perspire like crazy right so um, not only do you need just water in general it is nice to have it with ice in it because yeah. it cools you down like it's, it's ice ice cold and you're you're catching your breath because it's going so dry from all the heat they'll even buy bags of ice here in America you can actually buy bags of ice from the store and I don't I still but if you do that you can't live too far from the store because there's there's a high chance of the ice melting, no? Unless the bags are super like good at keeping the ice frozen. Maybe they've got some kind of layer, like a thermal thing. I don't know why people do that. I know because we have, you have ice trays and you put them in the freezer. Am I missing something? So that you can have ice for a party. Oh, right. Like a tailgating party or just generally a party? Any party. Any party in the summer. Or winter. Ooh. Who has ice in the winter? I mean, in the drink. Floridians? That's true. Is it even winter in Florida, though, when it's winter here? Yes, but <laughs> no. Not the same. Public this one seemed really strange yeah, no, for the first few this. months of living in America. Um, people going out to the store in their pajamas. Yeah, no, nah, this does not happen here. I've never seen it. I'm trying to think. Never. Never. And sweatpants and things like that. It's it's as if they don't care about what they look like while, you know, traversing Walmart, which I can understand. It's not really something you'd find back in Britain. I'm not, I'm not saying we dress our Sunday best to go shopping, but we at least make an effort, put on jeans and a t-shirt, you know. You will see people going out in their gym jams, their jammies, their, what are you, PJs, right? And I'm, I'm not exempt from that, especially right now. I mean, I don't care what people, I want people to avoid me. So of course I go out in my pajamas or anything. I went out in this the other day. These aren't my- Wow, what is this? Is that a ski mask? If you went to the store wearing this, you'd probably get arrested <laughs> in the UK. They'd be like, are you trying to rob us? Pajamas, that's just me looking like a Sith Lord. A dime store Sith Lord, but nonetheless a Sith Lord. And I suppose in many ways it speaks to that American tendency toward comfort. Uh, but this is not just a pandemic era thing. I mean, people have been doing this for centuries, probably. Pajamas? Yeah. Uh, I feel like that started in the 90s. So there weren't people going in, in the 19th century going out with their sort of sleeping cap on and things like that to their local blacksmiths or whatever. That's it. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to follow me. Uh, great video. It was a lot of fun watching a, a Lawrence Lost in the Pond video again. I do think as time goes on, the cultures are becoming so, so similar. And a lot of the things that are done in America are coming over here and vice versa. A lot of the things that we do over here are going over there. Um, the ice in the water thing, I'm a massive fan of. I love my drinks super cold, as cold as possible. I just find it super refreshing when it's really, really cold. The saying hello to strangers, I do that. I do that whenever I can. I just think it's nice. It's a nice thing to do, you know, just to acknowledge people, smile at people. People that don't do that, I obviously, you know, you can do whatever you want, but it's like, come on, you know, just why not? <laughs>
Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy my videos, please help me out by liking and subscribing.